All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. I'm Rosa. How did that work out for you? <laughs> yeah, let's jump into that, shall we? Side note, I have a, a goal I'm trying to reach for this channel, and the goal is to not have any more White House-related videos for the rest of 2017. Is it possible that it can happen? Could be. Is it likely that it's going to happen? Probably not, because, you know, with the spontaneous and sporadic irrational decisions, constantly being made every day. I might be on here tomorrow talking about how Donald Trump declared that California is no longer a state because they're a bunch of terrorists with Mexicans and ISIS and so we need to bomb the border so that California can break off and, and float away and crash into Hawaii because Hawaii is not a state either because Barack Obama's from there. You know, ain't no telling what we'll be talking about tomorrow. But anyway, Omarosa, where do we begin? So, if you don't know at this point, I'm already like a day or two late, but Omarosa is no longer working in the White House and the position that she had um, she was, from what I understand, like the Director of Communications for African American Outreach, something like that. I might have the title wrong, but that's what she was doing. Um, and so then it was announced that she was no longer, you know, in the White House. And I wasn't doing a video on this until I happened to watch the Good Morning America clip a few minutes ago. And I saw her doing that whole speech and she said all the stuff and, you know, I, I, I just wanted to help my people. I said, you know what? Okay. Now we're your people today, huh? You done threw us down the river a long time ago, but now it's, it's about your people. Because see, okay, you want to be you want to be a victim of, uh, of what's going on as far as racism in this country now that it's convenient for your narrative. Okay, let's go ahead and do a video then, Omarosa. We can do that. Um, and so, the narrative that was initially pushed out was they had a Christmas party and everything, and she, something happened, she her, her and, and um, Kelly and whoever else was out there arguing or something like that, and she was fired, and they drug her out and everything like that. I don't really know if that's specifically true. Her narrative was more so, you know, I went and I had a meeting, and we just discussed some things, and, you know, I had been meaning to leave after one year, because this was a one-year thing, and then, you know, we, we came to an understanding, and I, I was ready to move on. I don't even buy that story either, because I'm just like, you know what, I, all of that doesn't really quite align, because then, you know, there's also the story of, okay, well, her little fob and security pass thing didn't work and she ain't have access to half the White House anymore. So I don't know what happened, but all I know is if you got fired at the Christmas party, what you doing? Like, oh, who gets fired at the Christmas party? And I bet you that Christmas party was dry. Oh, I bet that Christmas party was so dry. Now, mind you, I was at the White House Christmas party. Like, they, they have like a million of them, but I was at one of them in like 2013. And I mean, that party was ah. Like, it, we, we wasn't really doing too much because they ain't had the music cranking. But the food was really good. And, you know, they, it, was, it was a good time. So, but that party just seemed like it probably would have been dry. And you know she was in there stressed out because she's in here working with all these people who are push, <laughs> pushing all these laws and stuff that are just killing black people and killing everybody else in the country and destroying everything. She walking around at the Christmas party stressed out. You know she was the only black person in the entire White House administration. So she ain't had nobody to talk to at the Christmas party because ain't nobody checking for her. Like, I know she was stressed out. Ain't nobody to culturally relate to in there because Ben Carson doesn't know that he's black anymore. Like, she probably was just miserable walking around, sitting, looking through the window. And if you know D.C., there's a nightclub called Park, which is not too far from the White House. And Park has these big, giant little skylights that just that wave all night and everything. You can pretty much see them in most parts of the city. So she's probably looking out the window. She can see the lights from Park, probably hear the music. <laughs> so she and that stressed out. And just a few blocks over, everybody else, ah, get, get me. But... <clears throat> Amorosa, let's get into you though. But see, the thing is, somebody had asked me, do I feel bad for her? And my uh, opinion on that, no, not at all. Like, first of all, my issue with Amorosa is this. Don't be fooled, she's a very smart woman, very intelligent. She was probably the smartest person in that White House, if we want to be real honest, because most of the people in there ain't playing with a full deck, clearly. We done seen all, we done seen a little bit of everything. Like, pretty much, it's so far, it's hard for me to do my job now. If you know I work with, I do after school program with children. And it's difficult because I'm over here trying to tell them they got to be the best that they can be. And you got to know how to read and do all this stuff. And every day they turn on the news and they see all these other people who, who aren't doing any of that, who can't read, who can't articulate, who can't do anything, who aren't playing with a full deck. And they're like, uh, man, in the White House. So what you talking about? But anyway, you know, she is a very, very intelligent person. The problem is she decided to sell out her own community for a come up because Amarosa is somebody who I believe is an opportunist. She will take any opportunity that comes her way no matter, you know, how hard it is to get that opportunity. She will climb any ladder, even if the ladder w was pretty much vandalized and destroyed so she couldn't climb it. Like, they could break all of the stairs in the ladder except for the very top one. She would get a rope and latch and latch on and pull herself right back up and get up in there. Like, that's the kind of person that she is. She's always, that's why she's always been in the public eye for all of these years. People may know her as just a reality star, but she's worked in the White House before. You know, she's had a bunch of really, you know, high-paying, 
you know, top tier kind of jobs and everything like that. And so Omarosa is no fool. But the problem is, Omarosa decided that her come up was more important than the well-being of her own community that she claimed that she was trying to help. And so that's where the problem is. And so it's like you dug yourself into a hole, Omarosa. Like, what were you doing? Um, and the thing is, like, her specific job, in my opinion, was her job was to be the white, uh, the mouthpiece for white supremacy. The, the mouthpiece to kind of make a lot of the decisions that were being made by that administration not look as bad and not look as detrimental to black people. And, and really, I think what was the nail in the coffin that got her pushed out, because I personally think she was fired. I think this Alabama result was, was the, the final nail in the coffin because they're probably looking like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be the person who's over outreach for African Americans and your job was supposed to go and, and make us not look racist and make us look like we don't want to destroy the country and make us look like we're not trying to mess up everything and make it look like we're not only interested in ourselves and the people in our good old boys club but your job was to go ahead and make black people like us and make us not look racist and I'm looking at the Alabama results and it's 92 93 percent of black men voted for the candidate that we didn't endorse it's 97 90 percent of black women that voted for the candidate we didn't even endorse if we go back to the actual election black women they were at a rate of 94 black men were at a rate, a rate of 88 how did the rate go up your job was to make it go down. So you, clearly you're going to have to go. You, we, we done hired your black ass and you didn't do what we needed you to do. So you got to go. Like pretty much that's my theory of exactly what happened. They may not have said it that way, but I can definitely see it. Because it's like, you know, we, we, we done brought y'all in here. We brought you in here to do this stuff. You're not doing what we need you to do. We sent you to one of these little black symposiums. They booed you off the stage. We sent you to do the HBCU thing. And you pretty much got booed off the stage again. Like, what you doing? You went on, We sent you on The View and, and somehow you messed that up. Like, you got to go. And so that's pretty much my theory. And, and it sucks for Amorosa because it's like, really, Amorosa has nobody in her corner. Nobody. Because one, white people don't really like Amorosa like that. She was never really on their radar for a couple of reasons. They didn't like her after The Apprentice. They didn't like the arguments that she had with Piers Morgan because, of course, you know, a black woman going to to toe with a white man and she's the one winning the arguments and really cooking. Oh, people don't like that because, of, of course, you know, black people, we're not supposed to be assertive. We're not supposed to have opinions. We're not supposed to be smarter than anybody. So when we can do that and present ourselves in that way, people get mad. And the only thing they know how to do is call us a nigga afterwards because they don't know how to even respond. Just You, you want evidence? Stick to any video I have on this channel. I guarantee you, you'll find it. But, you know, so they were mad about that. And then there was another woman on the show, this white woman that she used to go back and forth with. And she accused the woman of being racist and calling her like the N-word. And that made it all the way to the Oprah show. And you know why people love them some Oprah? They love, well, maybe not right now, because Oprah's kind of, she didn't, yeah. You know, they kind of stopped rocking with her after the election of Obama when she didn't endorse Hillary the first time. But long story short, at the time, they loved Oprah. And so when Oprah decided to go in on that woman about the whole N-word and everything like that, Oh, that made them dislike Omarosa even more. And then when Omarosa was on this in real life and she called Janet Jackson a crackhead, and you know Janet Jackson is already dealing with addiction issues and everything else, and oh, I, and Janet Jackson tried to jump out the window and stuff, and Omarosa was like, you're still a crackhead. Like, <laughs> they didn't rock with her. And then when she cooked Latoya Jackson or whatever on, on Celebrity Apprentice, it's like, okay, you, you, how, how do you get an argument with Latoya Jackson? How did that happen? So, you know, they already didn't rock with her. Okay, so by the time she made it to Bethany's talk show, and when she told Bethany that she pretty much gets paid for being, paid and re rewarded for being mediocre, and, and cut her some slack because, uh, Bethany, you worked, and you made cookies, but I worked in the White House, give me a break, she was canceled. And so, white people already didn't rock with Amaros like that. And so then you go out of way, and now you done burned the bridge with black people. And it's like, damn, what you, what you doing? Because you, not only did you throw us under the bus, the thing is, Omarosa knows how racism works in this country. That's what makes it funny. She knows exactly how all this works. One, she went to Howard, okay? Two, that same episode when she was on, on that Bethany show, she pretty much laid it out as far as how race works in this country when it comes to black men and black women and, and, and what our standards are and what we're expected to do in order to be successful. She laid it out. So she knows what's up. And black people knew that she knew what was up. But the problem is, she knew what was up, but she was willing to still climb that ladder and take her opportunity at the expense of all of us. And I know it had to kill her and sit there and, and watch the administration make all these horrible decisions that would, you know, disenfranchise black people or disenfranchise poor people or disenfranchise pretty much the majority of the country aside from the top, you know, 1% in, those, in the corporations. Her having to sit in all those meetings, she ain't even allowed to give her opinion because if her opinion is too black, she's out the door. So she just has to say, yes, Mr. Trump, this was great. Yes, Mr. Trump, that's a smart idea. Yes, I agree. I agree. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you know, her other job was to go do damage control on behalf of Donald Trump and black people. That was pretty much it. And so... I know it was killing her to have to sit there. You know, Ben Carson's like, oh, okay, I think we're going to cut some money, some funding from HUD. I know it killed her to sit there and sit 
and, and watch that. And she's over here thinking, okay, $180,000 a year, $180,000 a year, I can do this. And listen, that was a long year for her. I bet that year, it was a long year, you know. Because at this point, she's not even invited to any more cookouts with us. We, we don't even claim Omarosa. And the thing is, I've told y'all about these cookouts, by the way, as well. We're having too many of them. As a matter of fact, we need to stop all cookouts for like the next few months. We're living in tumultuous times, and we're having too, too much celebration, okay? It's going to be to the point. We're going to be at the cookout, and that administration is going to fence us in right at that park. And they're going to say, y'all are not leaving until you plant some tomatoes and pick some potatoes. Like, literally, that's how close it is. Plus... Y'all done invited too many people to the cookout that didn't need to be there in the first place anyway. It's over. It's too gentrified and stuff now. So now we, you trying to figure out how to make gluten-free hot dog buns and stuff to go with the hot dogs. We need a time. So let's pause on the cookouts. But Omarosa, I, I just don't know exactly what she's able to do. Like the only thing she might be able to sneak into is like the 7 p.m. service at church. Because you know them churches that be having like free services. Because that's, I remember growing up in that. Like you had the regular 11 o'clock service. Then there might be another one at 3 p.m. And you'd eat dinner at the church. And then there was that last one at 7 p.m. She might be able to get into that 7 p.m. one. Because that's the one where nobody goes to. It's like 10, 11 people left. Everybody tired. Everybody sleepy. She might have been able to get into that. But, mm, Omarosa. I know she was miserable. I'm telling you, that Christmas party had to be so dry. They didn't even have a DJ. They had the little band. She probably went over there to request a song. The band didn't know what the song was. So she had to sit there and keep listening to Sweet Home Alabama. And everything else. Um, mm, mm, mm. Amorosa, I would add you to the prayer list, but you're already a preacher, so you got it. So <laughs> figure that out. But yeah, um, we shall see what happens. Ben Carson, you next, sir. I know you don't think you're black anymore, and, I, and I'll give you a pass, because I definitely think something happened to you, because you ain't been the same since 2012. Um, but um, yeah, y'all figure this out. All right, I'm out. Subscribe.